get a hammerhead. So something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to be looking at some thermal vision. I am working on some big stuff behind the scenes, but while I wait for my concrete to cool and my hammers to hatch, I figured I'd show you something a little bit different. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably a connoisseur of the old Predator films, or maybe you've seen me use a bit of thermal vision uh, here on the channel once or twice. I'm usually using it to measure how hot my drills get during tests. But uh, you know what? This is really handy. It's super cool technology, uh, or hot, I guess. And uh, you know what? It's good for all sorts of stuff. It lets you see how cold your beer is. Oh, I'm not drinking that fast enough. Lets you see how hot your, your cup of coffee is. Lets you see where your cup of coffee was. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. So the camera I'm using today is the Unity UTI 690A. And who doesn't love a good UTI? So this is a pretty cheap but pretty good little camera and I'm just going to use it today to just show you how the whole thermography caper works. So what is thermal imaging or infrared? Um, well basically it's just a camera like any other. That's the lens there. It's got a little light and I think that's a laser. And infrared is basically just light like any other except we can't see it with our eyeballs. So all light uh, as well as radio waves, x-rays, gamma rays, that sort of stuff. It's all electromagnetic radiation and it falls on a spectrum uh, based on how big the waves are or how long the waves are. So if you have a long wavelength, you end up going down the red end of the spectrum through infrared to radio waves and things like that. Uh, and then if you go to the violet end of our visible spectrum, you end up going through ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. And uh, that is how Bruce Banner ends up getting his hulkiness. So infrared is basically, if you go to the red part of our visible spectrum and then just keep going, it's a pretty big band and uh, not all of it is heat. If you go just into the infrared band, you end up with light that is used by uh, various sensors as well that we can't see. So like your, your little remote controls, your security cameras, things like that. And then if you go a bit further down, uh, this is quite a big band. If you go a bit further down to around eight micrometers, uh, you end up with your uh, your thermal imaging kind of band. So that's basically where your heat lies. And so anything that has heat is going to be radiating this kind of light. So here's some hot water. It's about 40, 48 degrees. Uh, you can see what's hot and what's cold. You can see where cold things have been. You can see where hot things have been. So this starts opening up some pretty cool possibilities. There you can see my hand, except you can't see it with your eyes. <laughs> so thermal imaging can see through some things that are optically opaque, but thermally transparent, like this bag. <laughs> and the converse is also true. So here I am, I am actually measuring the temperature of this little pane of glass here. And you'll see that the glass is actually optically transparent, but thermally opaque. So you've got to be careful when you're taking measurements in some situations because here I'm measuring the temperature of the glass and not actually the cup behind it. And another thing you've got to watch out for is reflections. So you can actually see my reflection in the glass there. And this can be especially important when you're measuring metal. So check out this pot lid. If you want to measure the actual temperature of the metal, it helps that it's not shiny. There I am. So you go, that's me reflected in the metal. So do you want to measure my temperature? It says the metal is 32 degrees, but what's the actual temperature of the metal? 22? 22 sounds about right. Here, yeah, what about this? 22, yeah. So you've got to be careful with that kind of stuff. And that leads me into the next important part of thermal imaging, which is emissivity. So the emissivity is a property of materials that describes how much heat they're going to be emitting versus like reflecting or absorbing. So you can look up emissivity tables and then you can plug these numbers into your camera depending on what you're measuring. If you look at the non-metals, you can see that they're generally pretty consistent, usually around 0.95 or something. 
Uh, and that's often what cameras will just be set to. But if you're going to be measuring metals, you really need to get a good handle on your emissivity in order to get accurate results. As we can see by the steel, 0.07 to 0.85, that is a huge range of values and it really comes down to the surface finish. So if it's got like a mirror polish, you're really not going to be measuring accurately compared to something that's quite dull. If we look at these two pot lids, this one's very shiny, this one's very dull, this one reflects a lot of heat as we've seen, this one won't, so it's probably going to be a lot easier to measure the temperature of the actual metal with something like that. There you go, 22 degrees, and could be 30, could be 18, crazy. Look at that, that one's just a flat disc. And in fact, when you send a camera off to get calibrated, they use a black body radiator, so it's basically a heater with a black dull coating on it like that, that only emits heat. So if you wanna do a bit of thermography yourself, I mean, you can just go and get one of these little guys, pretty cheap, uh, pretty readily available nowadays. There are all sorts. You can probably pick one up from Banggood or whatever for, you know, 50 bucks. Um, now, one thing I'll note is they're not going to be super quantitative. They'll be good for qualitative measurements or what I call qualitative because the absolute temperature reading you get off these isn't going to be that accurate. And the reason I say that is because I compared the temperature reading from this guy with uh, temperature reading from my professional grade one that I use at work. And uh, the professional grade one, well, let's say I trust that one because it cost $4,000, not 200. Hell, the calibration cost $800, so four times as much as this whole camera. But if you wanna see hotspots and if you wanna see a general idea, it's not, it's not absolutely accurate, but it'll be pretty damn good, especially for just domestic use. One of these is a great little investment. I really love using this thing. If you're just starting out though, you just get one of them. That's just a infrared thermometer. Same kind of deal, except you don't get a, a nice picture. These guys are gonna be susceptible to the emissivity and the reflections and stuff, just like a thermal camera is, except with this, you can't see what's going on, but with the thermal camera, you can. So that's why I really like using these rather than these things. Now, I actually like thermal imaging so much that I actually just hated my first one and decided to buy a new one, which is a, a, a bit better. Uh, my first one was this uh, NoFire NF521. And uh, basically, I just really hated it because it has this auto auto ranging where you can't actually just see anything. See how it just goes to static. You point it at a wall or something. Like it's okay for seeing hotspots, but in unless there's a pretty big temperature difference in what you're looking at, it's gonna range down to, oh, tiny. I mean, that's a, that's a two degree difference there. So it won't actually pick out really subtle things very easily. And basically I just didn't like it, you know. For about the same price I was able to pick up this one which is just much better. So something else you might want is uh, different color palettes as well. So, so this one has the standard kind of color palettes where uh, that's lava, rainbow, iron, white hot, black hot, rainbow, yeah. So I'd like having different palettes does help. Uh, helps you highlight different things. So that's actually the cold is the brightest. Uh, you know, that kind of thing is pretty handy too. They don't all have that. So anyway, guys, I hope this has been illuminating for you. Uh, if you're into this kind of stuff, please do like and subscribe. I usually do rotary hammers, but I also do just general sciencey shit too. So uh, there you have it anyway. Um, from the Predator and I, uh, I will scratch you later.